Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. She's actually sitting in on a tabletop video. I am. Uh, we're going to talk about how Wizards of the Coast Hasbro created its own enemy and more enemies, more potential competitors uh, via that OGL 1.1 debacle mm -hmm. a few months ago, right? When, when it was leaked that the new version of the open game license would effectively take your stuff and people weren't very happy with it and it was very uh, strict and it had uh, uh, destroyed a lot of goodwill that had been built up in the fandom over the last, you know, 20 some years, however long it's been around. And now their competitors are stepping over them and they're they're presenting gamers with basically another OGL, but this one is decentralized and you can use it in any game system you want to. And I have to wonder if this isn't gonna tip the scales in the favor of other game companies because people that create this content are gonna be like, yeah, I'm not gonna create anything for, for Dungeons no. and Dragons now because I don't know what's gonna happen in the future. I'm gonna go- Can't make, trust them. No, I can't trust them. I'm gonna make stuff for Pathfinder or you know countless other RPG systems using this license. So that was a, a huge draw for D&D was they had this massive fan community, people that were creating uh, third-party content that helped drive the sales of Hasbro's book, official books and rule guides and stuff like that because they weren't allowed to copy those, right? Mm -hmm. they, they couldn't copy the copyright characters or the, you know, certain concepts they could mention or whatever. And uh, now they're just going to go someplace else. And I, I'm sorry, I think the damage has been done to Dungeons and Dragons and Hasbro's greed absolutely positively is is to blame for it. Yeah, well, and, it's, it's interesting because just a few years ago, well, 2021, they were like, that was their big thing was, you know, Watsy was like, they're huge, big draw. There were, yeah, and there were so many people on Twitter that if you criticize Wizards of the Coast at all, because they were like, Wizards is like our friends, guys. These are like, these are like the best people ever. Like, and if they you- They make prom campaigns and coffee make, shops and they're all about shop accepting. Adventures. And I can and I can go to this high school as magical school and, 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 and date my teacher and it's all good. It's all good. Cause now, you know, D&D &D has moved beyond those stinky old men. Well, now D&D &D has moved beyond its own fandom and it's just trying to, like now you can see what they actually were this whole time. You guys, like you were, you were hoodwinked for years and you stand for this company. It's just like Disney, same thing. You guys were hoodwinked for years thinking they were your friends. And when the chips are down, they fire the diversity officer because they're not making money. Right, right. Oh, you know? I'm just saying. So we're going to talk about this. Before we get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. If you do, you'll get a woohoo. Woohoo. Uh, I promise we will not send the Pinkertons to your house, uh, unlike Wizards of the Coast. But yeah, this is pretty interesting. This is uh, Paizo. The creators of Pathfinder, which itself is kind of an offshoot of the third right. edition of D&D. &D, and they walked away from Wizards because of the bullshit back then. Right? Yeah, it just got deeper. It just got deeper. So, yeah, here they encapsulate the Dungeons & Dragons OGL controversy and why there needs to be another license for those of you who missed the countless videos. Uh, for 20 years, the open game license allowed other companies to make D&D-based products freely. That's mm -hmm. true. A lot of the biggest Kickstarters for tabletop gaming were for unofficial modules and supplements for D&D. &D. And it only helped Hasbro because people still had to buy the rule books, right. the core rule books, right? These were supplements. It, it was like making uh, Nintendo cartridges, but you weren't making the system. You had to have the system, yeah. You had to have the system. In January, Wizards tried to introduce a new OGL that gave them royalties and greater control and revoke the old one. Mm -hmm. And people were creating all this content, putting all this money into creating this content. It seemed longer ago than January, but wow. It's been a long year. Yes. <laughs> um, the community action was so universally negative that Watsi ended up having to completely abandon the idea. Uh, I don't think they've completely abandoned it. I think they're just they're just waiting. They're waiting for the right time. Watsi ultimately left the original OGL in place and also released the latest version of the D&D 5e rules under a Creative Commons license. Not because they wanted to. No. The backlash is so severe. Yeah. Um, they said, even though Watsi you turned on its OGL plans, the damage was already done. When, once you've lost trust, it's, you're not going to get it back. I mean, it's nope. very, very hard to get it back because then, you know, when are you going to do it again? Like, you might, like, fall for it now. And then, like, two years from now, you might be like, okay, well, now you're back, so we're going to do it now. Yeah. Uh, any company 
existing as part of the wider D&D ecosystem, whether producing its own games using elements of D&D's rules or D&D compatible adventures across any edition of the game, past or present was forced to take stock. Suddenly, basing your business's future on trust in Watsi's ongoing intentions seems foolhardy. And many companies began to work to break their links with the OGL completely, for the most part, by revising or rewriting their products to no longer be beholden to it. I always thought it was really weird that people were, you know, their entire business model was based on creating unofficial supplements for a game system they didn't own. Mm-hmm. I'm like, the bottom could fall out of that at any right. point in time. Because they but. could, like, yeah, they could just say, they could shut the door and say, too bad. Yeah. And in this case, it wasn't just too bad. It was, we're taking all your shit, too. Yeah. So this is bad because what happened, uh, the backlash was so severe that a lot of people swore off Wizards. They're like, we're never going back. They switched to, to game systems like Pathfinder uh, and uh, countless others, too. A lot of we did videos on this before that the uh, every other game system, the sales went through the freaking yep. roof because everybody was looking for an alternative to D&D. And in some cases, like with Pathfinder, you can convert your campaign pretty easily because it's very similar, right? And even Critical Role said that they were going to have their own system. They weren't going to use D&D anymore. They were like the the biggest advertising right, that for they D&D, had. Yeah. So everybody's like walking away. So in the chaos, Pathfinder publisher Paizo launched development of its high-profile orc license backed by a huge alliance of other tabletop companies who pledged to use it. It's a direct rival to the OGL intended to give the industry a new safe license to rally around. Uh, now it's finally here. How does it actually work? So here's the thing. They don't actually own it. It's not like wizards that owned mm-hmm. the other license. This is decentralized. It said rather than being tied to a specific system, the Orc license is intended to work for any RPG. Once a publisher releases their game under the license, the system and mechanics are then covered, allowing other creators to use those elements in their own work without fear of any legal issues. It also explicitly works in perpetuity. In other words, once something is released under the license, it's covered by it forever. That's a pretty direct rebuttal to Watsi's attempted OGL changes, which were widely criticized for attempting to retroactively alter an agreement that was originally presented as irrevocable. That was under a different regime. And Hasbro, we know, is so desperate for money, and mm-hmm. they've seen... They've seen D&D become this huge thing, especially during the pandemic, and it's like their biggest moneymaker. Well, right they now. were they, they wanted it. When people were doing that stuff and they were getting like, you know, they were making still making money off of it, they welcomed it. But when t- when times got tough and they thought that it was taking money away from them, they tried to to grab it all and, you know, make it under, under them so that they put their thumb on all of it and they yeah. couldn't do it. Yeah, if Hasbro could – look, I'll tell you the truth. If Hasbro could – copyright the d20 game system if they could copyright tabletop rpgs you know and they could they could own the patent for it or whatever they would do it in a heartbeat mm-hmm. they tried for the longest time to stop third party transformers from being made they're like one well, kind of you know uh vehicle that turns into a robot we own it it's yeah, mine it's, ours. I, I, it's mine i like to do that that's mine it looks like that's something, mine. I, it looks like something i thought of once that's mine that's mine yeah and they they had i remember um there's a lot of ill will in the transformers community because they they were not uh, putting in appearances at conventions that would allow anybody that sold third party transformers like they were just absolutely batshit crazy and uh, they did this with ponies too i think mm-hmm. it was like anybody that did Probably. any like unofficial stuff well, i know would... you one time did a drawing of a shirt for me and it was a pony but like we it had a cutie mark on it but it was one you made up but it looked nothing like the 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 g2 or g um one ponies and you put it up there, and then we got in trouble for it because it turned out that inadvertently, you didn't know this, it looked just like the G3s that were coming yeah, out. Yeah, I didn't know that. And it did. You didn't even draw it that way, but it turned out that's what it looked like, and then they took it down. And even though you didn't violate anything and it was a generic course that looked nothing like their drawings, it turned out it looked like one that was coming, and they took it. Now, they're saying that, like, look, D&D is obviously the 800-pound gorilla right now in tabletop. Um, for now. For now. They said a lot of companies, though, are already jumping on the bandwagon with or because they want people that were making supplements for D&D. They want them to make stuff for their systems because people might be like, oh, I've, I've never heard of uh, Call Cthulhu or Fancy. Oh, you've never heard of Call of Cthulhu. I've heard of it. And I'm not even a gamer. Yeah, but they, they might be I like, I've never heard of that. But, I know okay. Fantasy Age, too. And I'm not a gamer. Mutants and Masterminds. That one I've heard of too. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's basically it's going to be like 
everybody else and then Hasbro. And and I don't know, I mean, they've got the brand recognition of D&D, but I don't think it's worth as much. I mean, look at how the movie did at the box office. It didn't do that great. Well, here's the kicker too. They didn't, they didn't invent it. No, they, they didn't. It. They bought it. <laughs> so, like know. Disney, they bought it and they, they ran it, it into the ground. Um, so anyway, I just thought that was kind of an interesting, uh, uh, you know, addendum to the ongoing saga. I think what we're going to see is a lot more third-party uh, game systems pop up and people migrating to other systems. And I don't think D and D is going to be thought of as like the the Xerox of of gaming anymore. I can't get past this dude right here next to the pirate girl. The way he's looking at her, I was like, if I roll a twenty, do I get the booty? You know, look at his face. Look at he's like creep. Look at that. She's just like, like, what are you doing? And he's just like creeping on her. This guy, this guy's like, what are you doing? Like, dude, seriously? Seriously. I'm trying to figure out how this girl brushes her hair, but that's a whole other story. I literally sat here when you started the video trying to figure out how does she even comb that? Anyway. She waters it. Okay. I think. I don't know. Anyway, we're going to wrap this up. Yes. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.